I've been keeping an eye on Forspoken ever since it was first announced, as it really compresses a lot of elements that I like to see in a game. Perspective, open world RPG, fast paced, elemental infused combat, these are all mechanics that pique my interest. But this particular game, it's just setting off so many alarm bells for me, and I haven't felt this level of concern since Cyberpunk 2077 launched way back in 2020. There's something about Forspoken, the way it is being shielded, which I'll get into all of this in just a moment, but this one is very, very concerning for me. What's going on everybody? It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And first off, I want to affirm my desire for this one to connect with the gamer base. But as they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. And I'm seeing a ton of smoke with Forspoken. Before we dive into this one, the channel has been seeing some explosive growth and I wanted to thank you all for the continued support. If you happen to like what you see, please take a moment to smash that subscribe button. And while you're at it, make sure to ring the notifications bell to receive all my latest upload alerts. Let's dive right into this one. Although I don't typically review games as part of my channel's normal upload content cycle, I've been involved in many early review content capture events. Now the typical MO for these things goes down something like this. You show up, you play a small slice of the game while your gameplay is recorded, you give the developers your thoughts on it all, and then your recorded footage along with the studio's B-roll clips are sent ahead to you. At this point, you have free reign to sort through all of this however many minutes of gameplay they send you, and fuse it with the B-roll and upload an early impressions video. As an example, when I was included in the Outriders events, another Square Enix effort, I got my hour or two of footage, they sent additional B-roll footage, and I was given pretty much carte blanche with basically no limitations. Anything in the captured footage was fair game, and away I went. And here is red flag number one for Forspoken, because while they did conduct an early playtest event back in September 2022, there were no recordings allowed. None of the hour or so of the build footage was sent along to content creators. Instead, Square Enix replaced it with their own seven minutes or so of B-roll that looked significantly better than that of the actual playtest footage. Now, while attendees were playing on consoles with 4K enabled gameplay modes, this build of Forspoken was not able to maintain that resolution on a consistent basis, as there were significant frame rate drops and performance issues, to the point that the dynamic resolution mode had to be enabled for better stability. But the footage that was supplied flowed and looked so much better in 4K that it was theorized it came from a seriously high end PC. And speaking of PCs, this is a perfect segue into the next red flag, red flag number two, and those are the PC specs themselves. And as someone that mains a PC, these are the most ambitious PC system requirements I can ever remember seeing. Skipping over the minimum, which shows a display resolution of 720p and 30fps, which is incredibly low and even then requires 16 gigs of memory and 150 gigs of HDD or SDD space, and I'll compare this to a couple of large resource intensive titles in just a moment, and you'll see just how out of the norm Forspoken truly is. Moving over to recommended requirements, and Forspoken has blown past most games in terms of the ask for processor, video cards, and memory, and all for 1440p gaming at, again, just 30 FPS. Now, if you plan on playing this game on a PC in 4K at 60 FPS, which I feel is kind of the industry standard right now, plan on putting together some serious PC hardware. Expect to need an Intel i7-12700K CPU, an RTX 4080 GPU, 32 gigs of memory, and 150 gigs of NVMe SSD or more, which will put many PC gamers out of this realm of 4K gaming possibilities. 
For comparison, Cyberpunk 2077, which I would argue has much better visual clarity than the available gameplay footage for Forspoken, only requires an i7-4790, 16 gigs of memory, an RTX 3070 GPU, and 70 gigs of SSD to run at full ultra settings. A more recent release, which has been universally applauded for its graphics, is the Callisto Protocol, which only requires an i9, 9900K, 16 gigs of memory, a 3080 GPU, and 75 gigs of available SSD space. These monstrous requirements have led rise to the theory that Forspoken is incredibly unoptimized when 4K gaming on a modern AAA title requires that much firepower yeah, that's a serious concern. And this ties back into the early review experiences, where the game was not capable of maintaining decent performance on consoles at 4K, possibly leading to Square Enix not recording player footage and instead replacing it with beautifully manicured 4K footage captured in studio on a PC. But this last red flag, Red flag number three is the one that really takes me back to the release of Cyberpunk 2077, and it has to do with review copies and embargo dates. Now, ideally, if you're going to review a game, especially one that has a supposed lengthy campaign, you want at least a week or two with the game to take your time and give it a thorough playtest. I personally remember putting in about 50 hours with Assassin's Creed Valhalla the week prior to its release, and it turns out I was only about halfway through the campaign when I uploaded that one, but it gives you an idea of time frames needed. CD Projekt Red was really silent and guarded with their review copies leading up to the launch of Cyberpunk 2077. Only PC keys were distributed, no last-gen reviews allowed, and only certain portions of the game could be included in the reviews or risk breaking embargo. And for good reason. That game was an unoptimized mess on last-gen hardware, and even the PC version with the proper specs was spotty. Forspoken is following along in that same vein as Cyberpunk 2077, and according to this post on Twitter, no PC review copies have been distributed, and the review keys that have been sent out are extremely rare. Many independent review channels were snubbed, many gaming news outlets are also in that same boat, and from the looks of it, Square Enix is attempting to keep the reviews limited to PS5s and to outlets that may tend towards less harsh, yeah, I guess we could say that, less harsh language, and an attempt to keep pre-release press positive and leading towards as many pre-sales as possible. With all of this said, the replacement of the review footage with 4K B-roll recorded on a high-end PC, the incredibly high PC requirements trending towards an unoptimized game, and the fact that Square Enix are taking a page out of CD Projekt Red's Cyberpunk 2077 playbook and steering the pre-launch narrative, all of this makes me very, very concerned for what could happen on January 24th. Hear me out. I'm all for new gaming IP and share as much enthusiasm for new titles as the next person, but I would highly advise anyone that is interested in picking up Forspoken to just sit tight, especially on PC. Wait for the smoke to clear, and then if you're still interested, wait for this one to develop a little further before deciding to pick it up. I look forward to reading your feedback on these four spoken pre-launch red flags, and I will of course do my best to respond. Remember to smash that sub button and ring the bell to stay up to date on all my latest uploads. If you could take the time to rate and or share this video, it would be greatly appreciated. Remember you can find and follow me over on Twitch, Twitter, and in my open community discord server, links to all of which can be found in the video description and pinned comments below. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off. System of failure.